Hi everyone. Today's little project is going to be repurposing this sparkling drink bottle. We used it for New Year's. My daughter has a birthday party that she's about to attend in the next uh, week or so. And we thought we'd put together a fun gift for one of her friends. So the project for today is going to be to etch this bottle. Typically with the etching that I've been doing, I have been etching the figure. What I'm going to do this time, since we're going to put lights in this bottle, I'm going to etch the whole bottle except for the figures that I want to illuminate uh, through. Uh, first thing you want to do is to get these labels off. We need to soak this. So get yourself a pitcher like this. We're going to fill. We're going to take this cap off. Fill this up with water so that it uh, takes all the air out of the bottle so it won't float. Fill your jug and then put your bottle down in the jug just like that. Leave it for about 30 minutes minimum. Better if you can do it overnight. And then once you're done, you're going to use something like this to scrape off the label. So just scrape off the old label. It should come off relatively easy once it's been soaked for some time. The glue can be just, uh, you can work the glue off with this. The majority of it will come off with this. And any uh, residue that's left over, you can just get it off with a towel. Now that the label's been removed, the next step would be to create the stencil that we're going to use on this. For that, I'm going to jump back uh, onto the computer and we'll go ahead and make those things up. This part of the video is going to be with shape selection. What I like to do is open up a browser and simply type in the type of shape that you're looking to create. Select images and then just look around for something that catches your eye. And I try to stay away from shapes that are very complicated, like this fairy over here on the right-hand side. She's got way too much detail on the wings. It's going to be difficult for the machine to cut that out. Something like this would probably be okay. For this example, I'm going to select a simple shape. We're going to go with this fairy here. And what you can do is, once you find the one that you're looking for, you can just right-click on it, save the image as. And I already downloaded it, so I'm not going to download it again. Next step would be to open up the Cricut Design Space. Head over to new project over here on the left bottom side. Once you're in this workspace window, there's a little cloud at the bottom left with an arrow pointing up that says upload. Click that. And then you're going to upload your image. So I've already uploaded the image. Here it is right here. But if you wanted to do it, you can just click the upload image, select browse, and then head over to where your image is. Here it is right here, the ferry. And if you notice, this ferry has a white box around her. You don't want the white box. As I've been working with this program, I've learned that there's a few different things that you can do to eliminate this white box. The one that I just recently used is the complex. You have three choices here. Simple, moderately complex, or complex. The complex gives you the ability to modify this picture slightly. Select complex, click on continue, and head over to the advanced options button. Click it, and you want to change this color tolerance to a higher number. I found that 70 works very well when dealing with images that are simple black and white. And what this does is it increases how tight the selection of the white is. If this was a very low number and you select the white for removal, what might happen is you'll have ja like jagged lines around your image. By this number being very high, it's going to create a very tight 
line around your image. Simply click on the white that you want to remove. In this case, the, all the white was connected and it got removed all at once. If that doesn't happen, it may remove in sections. All you need to do is just click on the different sections that are white until they're all gone. Once you're happy with the way the image looks, click on the continue button. And when you're on this screen, you're faced with two choices. Save as a print and then cut image or save as a cut image. In this case, we're going to save as a cut image because we're not going to be doing any printing. We simply want to cut. Once you've selected it, click on save. And now your new image is imported here in your selection. Go ahead and select the images that you want to use in the project. I'm not going to recreate the project. What I'll do is I'll open the project that I previously made. That way you guys can see how I arranged everything. So head up over here to my projects if you wanted to do that. And this is the project that I recently worked on. Double click it. And I'm going to show you a couple of changes that I made to it that helped me. So I'm going to select customize. And this is the way that I arranged them originally. And as you can see, everything fits on here. But what I found that happens is once you go to the next step, which is the make it step, you'll notice that Cricut shifts the images around on you. They don't stay where you place them. Now, I haven't figured out how to fix this, but I can tell you how you can minimize the use of the wasted material by rearranging the mat to fit all of your images in one sheet. And how you can do that is just click on the image that you want and move it over to the side. You're going to do this with all of them. That way you can get them close to where they need to be. And in this case right here, if you have an image that's occupying a lot of space, rather than just shifting it over the way it is, I'm going to turn this one up. That way it takes up less space when I move it over to the edge. Then I'm going to slide Wendy over as well. There I have both those, those uh, images moved over. Next thing you want to do is head over to your second cut mat. Select one of the images. We'll start with this bottom row of stars. And if you notice, there's these three little dots inside this little blue dot. You can click it and, it, and you have two choices, to move or hide selection. What we want to do is we want to move this object. So we'll click Move Object. It opens up another box, and this box shows you the mats that you have currently available. I want to move it to the top mat. So I'm going to select the top mat, click Confirm, and it just moved those stars up to the top mat. Go ahead and rearrange. Move your stars exactly where you want them on the mat. And do the same thing with the second row of stars. Select the second mat, click on the dots, click on Move Object, Select the top mat. Confirm by clicking confirm. So now we have all of our images on one mat. And what this will do is minimize the amount of waste. Instead of loading two individual pieces of vinyl, all you're doing is you're cutting all your shapes out on one sheet of vinyl. Once you are happy with the positioning of your shapes, all you're going to do is click on continue in the bottom right corner. Now what we'll do is head over to the machine and show you how it cuts it out. In this step, all we need to do is load our mat into the machine. I've already stuck the vinyl down to it. These are standard 12 by 12 inch vinyl sheets. I'm going to go ahead and load it in here. And all you have to do is line up one side, make sure it's up against the rollers, and then press this blinking button. That'll load the mat into the machine. Next thing, you'll notice this little thing blinking. Just click it, and it's going to go ahead and start cutting out our job.
This is going to take some time to complete. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video. Cutting time was about 7 minutes and 25 seconds. Once the machine is done, you'll notice this unload button starts to blink. All we need to do is press it and then our sheet will come out. Okay, the next thing would be to remove the uh, parts that were not going to be needed. And uh, there's a, the process is called weeding. There's a few new terms that I had to learn when dealing with this machine, so it's called weeding. And uh, all we need to do is, let me see if I can do it with my hand here so you guys can see how I do it on the video. So get yourself something that, that will grab this, this vinyl. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull the, the sections that you don't need off. So in this case, we want the Peter Pan, but we don't need this outside shape. If I was going to do the glass etching like I've done before to where it's just um, etch the actual figure then I would remove the figure but since I'm going to be etching the bottle what I want is this vinyl piece to cover the section of the bottle that I don't want etched I'm going to go ahead and do this for all the other shapes so this is what it looks like after you've weeded out all the material that you're not going to use so I've still left it on the mat. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to use some blue painter's tape. Stick it over the image and overlap uh, the seams just slightly. And that will allow me to remove it from this material and transfer it over to the bottle where I want to place it. They make a special paper that you can buy for this. Uh, Honestly, I find this to be a very inexpensive way. The only issue with this tape is that it's not see-through. But if you can deal with that, which really is not that hard to figure out what the placement's going to be, you can use this just fine. So what we're going to do is place it over the part that you want to transfer over. In this case, it's going to be the Peter Pan. And you want to make sure not to overlap too much. Just slightly overlap. If you overlap too much, what will happen is you won't be able to see through the tape. It will be too thick. And that's it. So now when I pull this off, I'll be able to transfer it over to the bottle. Pull the tape away from the uh, vinyl paper and it's going to bring Peter Pan with it. So if you can see, you can see right through it. See how we got the Peter Pan? So now what we're going to do is put Peter Pan on the bottle. So here we have our bottle. And then I can see through the tape so that I can position Peter Pan on the bottle. So I'm just going to eyeball it. The good thing about using images like this is 
Um, alignment is not that critical. If you were doing letters, you were going to write somebody's name, then you want to make sure that you get it right in the right spot, otherwise the letters are going to be a little bit off. They won't be straight. All right, you want to make sure that you push it all, all the way down. You can see the, the outline slightly. Just push it down real good. Make sure you got it all the way pushed down. And then what's nice about the painter's tape is the painter's tape will release from the bottle quite easily. And what I do is I'll start from the bottom and I'll just take off one layer at a time. So I got this layer over here, just peel it back, and then when we get to Peter Pan's leg, you'll see the legs stay stuck on the bottle. Let's do the next one. Peter Pan's hand, his body. I will do the rest of it. Okay. So that's how you transfer the vinyl to the piece that you're going to be working on. I'm going to go ahead and transfer all the rest of the parts on here. After some time of arranging the stencils, this is what I came up with. I had the stars all individually cut out and uh, I arranged them in the bottle. That we're going to be blasting at 20 psi with uh, 80 grit media and it shouldn't take uh, very long. We're going to frost everything that's not the sticker. So the whole bottle essentially except for the bottom and then the very top. This is what it should look like, guys. All frosty. You shouldn't see any shiny spots. And then here's the magic right here. As you get this thing going. It's cold out today, guys, so the sticker's uh, kind of hard to get off. Put the length to the vinyl that I'm using. It's very strong adhesive and it makes really clean, uh, nice lines.
See how cool that is? And unlike the chemical etches that leave a very blotchy finish, this leaves a perfect finish. So there's your, your fairy. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the rest of the bottle and uh, show you guys what it, what it looks like when it's done. The bottle's completed. This is how the frost job came out. Looks real good. It's nice and even. You don't get this kind of result uh, using the chemical etch. For some reason it comes out very blotchy, but this, uh, this finish is awesome. What I plan to do with this, guys, is use a uh, fairy light kit. You guys can pick up these little fairy lights online. I picked this up from an LED store. I'll put the links up in the description. Once you unravel it, you get something that looks like this. And all you got to do is just fish it inside the bottle. It takes a couple of minutes, but just take your time. Almost there. And that's it. And you can just switch on your little bottle. And now you got a real nice gift that you can give to someone. It's a one off. They're not going to be able to get it anywhere else. And you can change it up. If you don't like the stars, you can put rainbows, you can put stripes. Um, you're only limited by your imagination. Guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Comment. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Appreciate you guys watching and taking the time and giving me feedback. Until next time, take care.